Alrighty. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that the new chapter was definitely one of the worst chapters to ever release. If not, you might have your own opinion. That's mine. But definitely, without a doubt, in anyone's minds, it wasn't the smoothest release and things weren't the best. And even if you think everything was good, we can just boil it down to, hey, that Mori just goddamn sucks. Anyways, I'm not here to make another video like that where I'm just going to be criticizing, criticizing, criticizing. I want to give some more constructive things on how behavior can go forward, make things better, and what they can do in the future to make sure something like this doesn't happen. So, with that being said, it's time to jump on into everything. Now, I want to start off with my own rating of this chapter because so many people have been asking, what do you fully rate this chapter? What do you think about it? I'm going to give you my overall rating. That overall rating, when I broke it down on this nice little uh, clipboard here, that rating is a 2 out of 5 or a 4 out of 10. I gave design a 3.5 out of 5, lore a 3 out of 5, perks 1.5 out of 5, power 2 out of 5, map 2 out of 5, even though we didn't get a map. Uh, the Mori was a 1 out of 5, and the music, the chase music that is, was a 2 out of 5. The only thing helping the design and the lore were the survivors, overall giving this a 4 out of 10 in total or a 2 out of 5. And just for reference, I did the same exact thing for the night chapter. And again, this is just my opinion. Design, I gave a four. Lore, I gave a four. Perks, I gave a two. Power, I gave a 2.5. The map, I gave a three. The Mori, I gave a four. And the music, I gave a three for a three out of five or a six out of 10, which at the time was my worst ever rated chapter. So in my opinion, it just goes to show how bad this chapter really is. Now, how can they correct this and ensure that we don't get another bad chapter after this or multiple bad chapters or just trying to stop these chapters from being so bad? And again, that's subjective. You might think this is the best chapter ever, but when majority of the community is saying that it's not good, I think it might be time to at least listen to what the majority of people have to say. And before we go on into every single point, I want to let you guys know that today's video is actually sponsored. I don't do a lot of sponsors on the channel, but they definitely go a far away and they really do help. So I hope you stick around for it. And today's sponsor is Yahaha. Yahaha is a new UGC creation platform for 3D multiplayer interactive experience. With this, anyone can create and publish their own virtual experiences without having any coding experience or server knowledge whatsoever. Simply use some of the cool features, components, and smart assets in the studio to make your dream game. Yahaha supports multiplayer so your friends can join in in games and other immersive 3D events. You can also make new friends at any time in Yahaha. So as you can see on screen right now, I'm actually using the software itself and I want to change the background a little bit. I'm not really feeling the blue sky, so we're going to change this to a nice gloriful sunset. So I simply go to sky. I'm going to click here on the gloriful sunset. And as you can see, it is now completely changed and looking pretty good when you look around. So I also need to change the lighting a little bit. So right here, you can see that I'm changing the sky and I'm going to adjust the color and the shading a little bit so it looks a lot nicer. And I can basically mess around and do anything you want, as you can see here, going over to purple. Maybe we'll go ahead as well and add a little bit of exposure to this to change it up a tiny bit. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that result. So Yahaha hosts regular live sessions for the community to help creators enhance their metaverse building skills. You can follow them on Twitch or check out some of their previous sessions on YouTube. Now, as you guys know, sponsors really help out the channel. So it mean the world to me if you can click on the link down below or even scan the QR code that's on screen and give Yahaha a try and start making your dream game and virtual events for free. The fact that it's so easy to use right off the bat, it just makes it super interactive. So a big thank you again to our sponsor, Yahaha. The links will be in the description if you want to take a look. So again, a big thank you to the sponsor. As I said, sponsors really help out the channel. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the rest of the video. So one of the big things that behavior can do is to delay some of the chapters from coming out. Nobody would mind if they were like, hey, we need a week or two weeks to just really brush up and polish things because it's not really looking good. And maybe we can make the timeline. Maybe we can get this chapter out to be as picture perfect as we want it to be instead of being like, hey, this is the deadline. We're just going to give you what we have right now and fix it in the future. I think that way it'll be way more well received. Obviously, they've been doing four chapters every three months for years now because it has been a successful formula and sometimes i feel that might be overwhelming or if a wrench is tossed into that plan in our previous video we mentioned how updates kind of roll out and how they kind of work if something interferes with that time and they aren't able to actually fully implement the patches or changes that they want to do sometimes it might be better just to be like hey we need some time off 
and there was a time where they have successfully done this and i've seen people saying how dare you delay something and and to those people you can't please everybody there's always going to be people like that but the majority of people would definitely be happy if you took your time made something a little bit better and it wasn't a frequent thing you're always doing and you're like hey this needs some polishing let's get it done i think that's a good step that they can take moving forward to ensure that we don't really receive another chapter like this or maybe the way they seen how bad the knife chapter performed for the sense of it being a boring type of killer just holding down three gens dragging out games maybe if that's the thing that you have planned next for the next chapter you might want to look back into it and maybe tweak a few things where you could still use the same concept but it wouldn't become the meta of that a good way dead by daylight can know how the community is truly feeling is by pushing out more surveys now they typically do these surveys as is more surveys would be nice right after the ptb would be fantastic then when the chapter drops ask us about it again and then the most important part i feel about this is to tell the community what the response for the chapter was so we can actually know how people are feeling about this so we can know hey maybe we are the only ones feeling this way maybe this is the majority of people and nobody just wants to talk about it and then allow them to give us a good response to it they've done this in the past where they said hey like the night chapter didn't go as planned or maybe this release wasn't as smooth so this is what we're doing it would be absolutely fantastic if they decided to actually go ahead and say hey we've seen all your feedback we've seen that this wasn't the best so we want to let you guys know that moving forward we're going to ensure that something like this doesn't happen again so to summarize more surveys and just listening to the community more would be fantastic now here's something that i've always kind of pushed for but we never really had and it's a lot more complex than how i'm saying it but this is something that they definitely could do and that's a private ptb before the ptb is even fully out now as a fog whisperer i am already on an nda that's something that if they're like hey this is nda stuff you can't talk about it i am not legally allowed to tell you guys about it now, admittingly, there hasn't been too many things that I've known that has been NDA. And when I do know some NDA stuff, it hasn't been the biggest fish in the pond. You know, it hasn't been like, oh my God, I knew the, I know the next chapter. I know what's coming up. It's never been like that. And I do like it that way because it really helps in the speculation type of videos that I'm making. But the fact of the matter is there's 50 plus fog whispers. And these are some of your most dedicated players to the game. These are people that know the ins and outs of the game. They have been playing this game for a majority of their careers where they're streaming or making YouTube content. So needless to say, they are pretty well educated in the game itself. The good thing about this is that there's a lot of different survivor mains, there's a lot of different killer mains, there's people that are in between. These are the people that are going to give you some honest and good feedback about the killer, or the new survivors, the new perks, the new map. If there was a private PTB just for those people and maybe other select content creators, or even if they decided to go along the route of revealing everything so you don't even need an NDA, telling us what everything is ahead of time, and then being like, hey, a select few people will play the PTP, then we'll have the actual PTP. Those people can give some really good feedback on the chapter itself before it goes into PTP and then it's absolutely terrible. As of now, the way the PTP itself works, it's more of the devs trying to collect all the extra bugs that they have. Again, we spoke about how these updates work in the past where they have very short time frames, but it's very evident that the PTB itself is not necessarily what your opinion is on the killer because we don't see those changes initially. In fact, the data mine changes were already there in the next patch before they even heard anything from us. So they already knew that this killer wasn't as good as intended when they did their play testing and then they pushed out the pad. So this is even us and a direct, you know, correlation to what we have to say. This is just them knowing, hey, this chapter is not really that good in the sense that the killer is not that strong. Let's buffer up in certain aspects. And then in the mid chapter patch, which is a month and a half later or maybe three months in total, then they're like, all right, let's listen to community and make some adjustments. And we've seen this time and time again with other chapters like the night where they then make adjustments. So if there was a PTB for select groups of players, they can get this feedback even earlier and then make those adjustments while that comes out in the full release to give them an extra window of time. It's just a little thought that I have. This isn't something that's super high on my priority list, but I think it can go a long way and it would really, really give some fog whispers and other content creators and to even feel a little bit more valued and overall just to have more utilization and do more things because, you know, we love the game. Another thing about this is just listening to the community and being more transparent. And we already kind of touched upon this with the surveys and listening what they have to say, but just to emphasize on that a little bit more, 
if you're giving a chapter that people are really not happy with and then do pretty much the same thing in the next chapter you gotta listen to the people you have to make those changes asap and then let them know that hey maybe this was a little bit uh behind in development or ahead in development and we weren't able to change things as we didn't really get time to gauge the response and do everything having that transparency would be so nice so if they're like hey we know you guys didn't really like the night chapter this new chapter is very similar to that but we were so far ahead in our development cycle that we weren't really able to touch it up so hey in the next mid chapter we're actually going to go back brush up everything make sure it's nice and polished we're going to stick with our timeline because that's the timeline we have to work with for other future projects we're working on but we hear you and we're going to be fixing it i feel like the community would really enjoy that and really be reassured that hey your voice is being heard rather than posting numerous things on forums or twitter etc and not even knowing if they're acknowledging it overall i think that is something that they could definitely work on and improve upon moving on to the next thing on the list is strong slash meta killers and i need to elaborate on this one and it's trying to find a balance of the two i feel like a lot of people in the dead by daylight community itself and maybe even the devs at this point kind of put fun and strong on the same scale where it shouldn't be that way you know fun the opposite should be unfun and when you have a strong killer, the opposite should be weak, not fun. I feel like a lot of people, for example, might think that, let's say, the trapper. That trapping people in your trap is super satisfying and fun. Like, that's a really cool thing. When someone runs in your trap, you're like, ah, yes. But that's it. The rest of his power is weak. Or if you think of someone like the nurse. If you're getting nursed 52 times in a game and the nurse is ending the game in 32 seconds, she's a really, really strong killer. So therefore, she's not fun to play against or as, you know? And again, that shouldn't be that, that way. Take a look at Wesker, for example. I think Wesker is a good example of a killer that's pretty fun, you know, to play as and against and decently balanced uh of course there's gonna be people in the comments that disagree and that's fine but objectively looking at it there are stronger killers than wesker and most people that play wesker have fun hence why he's been one of the most picked characters in the game and why people kind of got sick and tired because they seen him too much but the reason why we seen him too much is because he was decently strong and he was really fun voice lines tossing people around cool mori it's really awesome and I think that's the kind of stuff that we need in the game and the devs kind of forget about that. When you boil Wesker down, for example, to where his strong suits are, it requires a little bit of high level gameplay. You know, you have to make some tactical decisions in using your power and you have to be pretty good at it. Same can be said with other killers, but there isn't anything necessarily that's kind of like the option or you have to do this every single game in order to win. A good example of that is a knight forcefully putting three gens on everybody in order to be successful and that becomes the meta on him because and people build around that and nobody wants to sit in the game for 30 35 minutes playing the same game until one side gives away that is boring that is unfun for both sides because it's just a constant tug of war until someone gives up that's not really fun you rather have a killer that can either maybe even bring it back in the last few seconds or you can have some really fun chases or a really good time just trying to focus up and shift your gents etc it is a little bit difficult to explain realistically but the point i'm trying to make is that if you're making a killer that's strong based on something that's super niche such as the knight only three genning or the newest killer only being successful when you three gen and yes there's other ways you can do it but the most effective way is doing it that way so most people are going to do it that way then you're going to make a killer that people will always rely on that and then that will make the killer boring sure you can play her in the undetectable way or maybe the gen stopping way but when it comes down to it most people especially those who want to win will play that way so that's what you will see the most when you look at a Wesker, even if that person is trying to win, they still have to be fairly accurate with their pounces. There's still good counterplay to that. There's a lot of things that can go into it that makes it fun for both sides. Sitting at a generator for 35 minutes trying to get it done or holding three generators until the match is over is not really fun. So finding that middle ground of fun and strong, I think is a little bit difficult. They shouldn't be on both scales. And I think the devs need to think about that moving forward. Find out boil down what is this killer going to be how are people going to play them and answer the question is that going to be fun for both sides and then move forward in that imagine if this killer for example used the drones to fully be undetectable while in that radius if anybody in that radius was severely punished rather than it just holding three gens 
What if the drones can move around and create a path for you? It's a completely different style of gameplay with the same type of concept rather than leaving your stagnant drones on a couple of generators and if someone walks in the area they have to either run out or disable the drone really quickly. This would create a whole different type of concept for this character you'll have not only undetectable but some good chase potential which is completely different from what we have now and that could be a lot better that's just another example of how they can make this more fun rather than meta inducing and boring and i think a big part of this also boils down into using the same ideas and that's the next point of go crazy with it you know don't sit and do the same exact things every single time and settle for it you know looking at this killer it's another killer that holds generators you know so i feel like they're playing really safe in these like kind of okay this is going to be a little bit different but when you boil it down you could be like it's this killer and this killer combined go a little bit crazy with it you know the drones are new and different but the power itself and boiling it down is just the same three gen which we literally just seen with the knight so i think they're playing it a little bit too safe in a sense that they're scared of making someone that's gonna break the game like the nurse but they have the opportunity of doing that like the amount of times i've seen killer instinct and powers now or the similar thing in every single add-ons it gets quite annoying just seeing the same thing over and over so i think moving forward if they decided to be like hey we're gonna try something new that we've never tried before what if we got a killer that literally pounces in the air or something like that a killer that actually flies around or things like that something that we've never really seen before would be quite good and i think they're a little bit more reluctant in doing that in fear that they might be making the next monstrous overpowered killer but that's something that they need to test and again that goes to our other points and if they follow that formula it could be a lot better hey i also want to take this time to let you guys know about our discord our twitch our youtube all that good stuff make sure you guys are subscribing if you are enjoying these videos i'm also opening my discord to youtube again you guys can join by clicking on the link down below and we are going to be live on twitch every single weekday at 12 p.m eastern standard time all the way to 3 p.m eastern standard time so hopefully we see you guys there I'm trying to build that 100 average back up and one person makes a difference oops sorry mike so i would really really appreciate it if you guys come on out so those are the things that behavior themselves can do to kind of make the next chapters pretty good and ensure that we don't get another chapter like this. Just taking in our feedback, listening to what we have to say, going a little bit more nuts when it comes down to some of the buffs and changes and trying to prioritize fun and still strong over a week and the same kind of meta inducing boring type of gameplay. But what can you do as a person that's just playing the game, just a regular everyday person chilling out, having a good time? What can you do to give behavior this message? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. The first thing that you can do is not to buy these chapters that you feel are unfinished, not polished, or just not good enough. Now, this chapter I definitely think is polished. I think there was a whole team responsible going through everything, but it just didn't necessarily hit the mark of what we were looking for. And yeah, I, I've heard Polly's theories and multiple other people's theories about maybe this was a Predator chapter and it got switched last second, etc. And if you really feel that way and you think that this chapter isn't fully what you want, don't support it. You have to let the devs directly know that, hey, this isn't something that I like. And sales will directly show them that this isn't something that the community wants. We need to improve upon this. That's one thing that you guys can do. Now, obviously, if you're in a different position, maybe you're a completionist. Maybe you're a content creator. Maybe you really do like the chapter. Of course, go for it. Bye. You don't have to restrict yourself because everybody else is doing it. That's completely up to you. And I'm not calling for like a boycotting or anything like that. But if you really don't enjoy something, don't waste your money on it. It's your money at the end of the day. As someone like me, I am a content creator. So I'm kind of not necessarily forced, but I need to continue to show the new content to people and to make videos like this, especially to tell you guys if it's worth it or not. And I've heard this a lot as well, and I completely agree. Mint Skull has made points about this. I've seen Ots recently comment this on a Spooky Loops video, and that is to encourage Dead by Daylight to monetize in other ways. And there are tons of things that they can do, and all they need to do is look at their buddies at NetEast doing it on DVD Mobile. We have new Moris there, alternate Moris, legendary skins. They can monetize charms. They can make their own type of Funko Pops or collections with keychains, things like that push the merch shop for crying out loud a little bit more make more legendary skins that always have new chase music new theme music allow us to put on alternate chase music or alternate loading screens you know you can even put relics like what dbd mobile is doing there's tons of different ways they can monetize the game those are just things off the top of my head that they can do 
but so many other ways that will take pressure off from the DLC, give the company more ways to monetize and make money in other ways, which can then help make these chapters a lot better. And those are the things that you directly can do to make the chapter itself feel a lot better, a lot smoother, and moving on forward, giving them direct knowledge that, hey, this chapter isn't good, work on it, fix it make it better for us when it does come out and for other chapters in the future let me know what you guys think about this video it is again i'm not used to these style of videos it's very different from what i've ever done and you guys just really seem to enjoy them so i want to continue pushing the envelope and seeing where it goes i hope you guys really did enjoy and if you did leave a like down below and subscribe for some more awesome dead by daylight videos i think i'm going to stick with this format of like this really serious kind of talk i like it we're going to do more documentary style videos as like the column i'll let you guys know what it's like being a fog whisperer the ins and outs of everything i'll let you guys know about stranger things and really have like a document style video i enjoy this i think it's pretty cool i also have another thing where i'm going to ask you guys to submit clips and we can go over some of the best clips that you guys have something more lighthearted and fun all in all, I have a lot of cool things planned, and I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Again, our Discord is now open to the public again, so you guys can come ahead and join. Twitch would love to have you guys there, and we can talk about this live. And of course, if you do enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe for some more awesome Dead by Daylight content. Another big thank you to our sponsor, and as always, I'm the king. I tip my crown to you guys, and we'll see you in the fog. Take care.